Greetings, listeners from all across the country, globe, and multiverse. Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chasers. Now, normally, this would be the part where we would toss it over to our doppelgangers, but I'm checking around. Doesn't really seem like we have them. I don't know, Brian, what do you think? Nah, man, we all cool. Seems like we're the only ones. See, normally, this was originally a video podcast, you guys, if we haven't already mentioned that. And uh, normally, this would be the part where we would, like, do a cut, and then there'd be, like, a little gag where I'd be, like, wearing my hat backwards or some dumb shit. But it's really hard to actually portray a doppelganger with it's just being audio. So, you know, we're not going to do that gag. But we are here to talk about the finale of Christ on Infinite Earths. So sit back, grab a snack, grab your drink of choice, whatever you want to do, because this is going to be a long episode. We all could in the hood. <clears throat> Give me back my mic. Hey, guys. Okay, okay <laughs> so um, I, 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 apparently there is a hip-hop earth, and yeah, I, I, I did not know that one exists, but that seems pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, um, what was I going to say? I, I wanted I wanted to first, uh, you know, say thank you to like the podcast. It's not, you know, it's not growing massively, but it's growing. You know, I'm seeing definite growth. We actually have a viewer in or a listener in France. I'm so used to saying viewer. We have a listener in France. So bonjour. I'm sorry. I, that's the only word I literally know of your language. But clearly you can understand English. So thank you very much, sir and or madam. Indeed, thank you. Um, but yeah, that's pretty dope. And um, if you are coming here from the Batwoman podcast, what's up? I'm glad you're here. Uh, hopefully, you know I, that plug got through at the end of the uh, this week's episode or this past week's episode. Um, and uh, I hope you. I, I'm glad that your first one is going to be one of our longer episodes uh, because this will really give you a, a good feel about what our format is like. Indeed. Yep. So, um, wow. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, you know, th- normally we would do kind of like a refresher thing, but we literally did like an almost two and a half hour podcast on the first three parts. So really no need to mention anything. Uh, but I will say uh, for me personally, I actually like after thinking about it and watching a couple parts over again, um, I think I actually like the first half better than the second, or the, like the finale portion. Like, don't get me wrong, the finale portion has good, mo- great moments, but I think I liked the first half better than the second half. And personally, for me, I know this is normally something like we would tape like towards the end, but personally, for me, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths is not my favorite crossover from the Arrowverse. My favorite crossover still stands to be Crisis on Earth X. I can see that uh, that is still the only crossover that has gotten to a legit cry. I mean... That's what I'm saying. I got, like, genuine emotion out of it, and I'm, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about it as we go along, but I feel like as these crossovers get bigger, uh, it just, it something feels a little weird about it. Um, well, I can I go ahead and say this without spoiling. Mm-hmm. Um... That, like parts three and four felt a little off. Yeah, but one, two, and five were legit awesome. Oh, I, I yeah, I would, I would definitely say I liked one, two, and five. Um, uh, yeah, four is a little, uh, three and four both are a little weird. Um, but yeah, I that, that's why I say I mostly like the uh, first half because like I like two parts of the first half and I like you know, one part of the second half. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's basically how I split it up. Uh, but, of course, you know, it has been well over a week, or actually at least a week, I think. Um, I'm not looking at a calendar right now. Uh, but, long story short, you guys have had enough time, if you were going to see Crisis, uh, to see Crisis. So, this is your obligatory spoiler warning. Also, uh, just... Just heads up, because Crisis and how it is, 
we might end up spoiling some of the stuff from the. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, we're we're gonna de- uh, hopefully. It's also been a week since the, or at least you know, yeah. No, it's a week. Yeah, it's been a week since the mid season premieres because this comes out on Sunday. So you hopefully have seen the mid season premieres. We're gonna at least talk about stuff from those episodes. Um, Air- Brian, Arrow, Brian, Su- Supergirl, and Batwoman. And Brian's gonna talk about Black Lightning because I have, you know, yet to, I haven't watched Black Lightning. So. I'll let Brian handle that one. Um, so, the uh, the last half. So, previously on Crisis on Infinite Earths, Lex Luthor pulls the ultimate dick move and traps the Paragons in the Vanishing Point with no Brandon Ralph Superman. Once again, Brandon Ralph Superman was freaking cheated. Yep. I was, I was honestly legit pissed. But... But I will say, for him to take over a Paragon, he definitely chose the right one. I mean, Paragon yeah. Of, Paragon of Truth? Yeah, you know, I will I will give Lex, uh, you know, I give Lex a lot of shit. But one thing I will say, um, yeah, he does bullshit sometimes, but he is a pretty straight shooter for the most part. At least in the crossover, he never lied. Yep. Yep, so... It's definitely the one to fit. He doesn't fit. He doesn't fit anything else. I, sure, as hell doesn't fit humanity. I don't know humanity. You could stretch it in a certain way because he's the paragon of like the bad of humanity. If you get what I'm saying, like maybe he, he's like the pinnacle of what humanity could be at its worst. So you could, but tap- definitely not paragon of like justice or destiny or hope. Especially not hope. No, nope. uh, but yeah. So you know, so we cut six months because you know, as the Arrowverse does, the the mid season pickup is well, always in real time. Not six months, but or however much, however much time, like it was, it was like, like a month. Yeah, well, yeah, like one month, whatever, whatever. How many? How much time it was in real time? Uh, yeah, so, they were stuck uh, in the. The, the vanishing point, and mm-hmm. so, so uh, Ryan and Lex are trying to like refer, uh, repurpose um, time bureau slash time lord tech. What are they called time? No, time master. Master. Time. Time. time uh, it's so weird because they're called time masters, and I think of the master with Doctor Who, and then I confuse like time lords, and you know, you guys know, yeah. the deal. you guys know the deal. There was a whole we did a whole Doctor Who episode, um, but anyway. So, they are trying to repurpose the time travel tech to get the hell out of the vanishing point. Um, meanwhile, like, everybody else is, you know, sitting there Broken. Brooding. Yeah, they're sitting there brooding. As you uh, do when you're defeated. If I remember correctly, John, John is just um, meditating. Yeah, he just straight up meditates. Uh, um, Kate is training. "Quote unquote," which is you know something she you know rarely ever does in her own show. If you guys are coming from the Batwoman podcast, you know that's one of my problems. Sarah, uh, 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 what much we call it? Uh, Sarah seems like she's halfway training, halfway brooding. Which you know is kind. Well, she broods while she trains. Like I feel like it's kind of a default. She is from Arrow. Yeah, Bro- brooding while training is kind of a standard on Arrow. Uh. Kara, poor Kara is just broken and depressed. She, she, she's not brooding. She's just straight up depressed. Like, if she had a Walkman and she was listening to said Walkman, the song Mad World would be playing. And if you get that reference, Yo. it's a really awesome show that I hope to cover in the future on this podcast. And maybe cover here. That's what I said, on this podcast, is. yeah. But, but yeah, and... uh then we've got Ryan and Lex who are begrudgingly working together. And Lex, and, of oh. course, yeah, Lex, of course, is being a dick because he's like, "You're a genius, but you're not a me level genius." It's <laughs> like, why did I get stuck here with someone who with only, less than a two hundred IQ? Yeah, who only has a two hundred IQ? I'm sorry, did you yes. just say only? Oh, and we forgot of all. 
Oh yeah. Very. Oh yeah. So okay. So a little peek behind the curtain. If you are with my YouTube channel slash uh, Blair channel, one of my ongoing catchphrases ever since season two. Two of the flesh. This is what it started. See, it happened when they once. started introducing time travel. It happened once in season one, but I was like, okay, that's a one-time thing. But then season two came around with flash points and stuff, and my catchphrase became, "God damn it, Barry!" So much so that I made it into a T-shirt. Uh, yeah, so you could you know, check that out later if you're interested. But uh, yeah, God damn it, Barry! Barry is over here. Everybody else is sad. Barry, of course, he in superpowers. So what does he do? He runs around. Trying to break into the speed force, and apparently, and apparently for him, something goes up where he comes back a month later and thinks it's only been minutes. Yep, because with the whole antimatter thing, like I guess the speed force is all kinds of jumbled and whatnot, and you know the speed force does exist in all realities and all points in time, so it's it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, and the fact that. He's trying to run to see if there's anything beyond the vanishing point. Yep. And nope. they were like, and, and he literally comes back and they're like, Barry, where the fuck have you been, man? This is like, what do you mean? I just left. And it's like, nah, bro. You left you left a month ago. It's like, don't you see the beard on Ryan? <laughs> right? You think he could grow if that man could grow that in a month, I need to I need to talk to his beard oil guy. Cause like, seriously, that, that that's a very impressive beard. Uh, but yeah, um, beard jokes aside, um, so of course everybody feels all dejected and hopeless. Now this is when Ollie Ex Machina shows up, which, by the way, uh, it starts off with the Arrow episode, which starts off with a pretty epic, like Spectre, um, you know, in Oliver's entire life in one montage. Uh, like well, um, yeah, in a montage of the final boss fights, which you know are are pretty awesome. I, I mean, I still hold that season two has the best finale, other than maybe seven, because seven really felt very, very final. That and uh, we have yet to see eight. Well, I'm not counting eight because we know eight's going to be real good because it's a, it's a you know it's going to be a two hour special and well. I'm, you know, it's a one hour pre special and then, the, you know, the, the episode. But we know since it's the final, final episode, it's going to be great. Um, yeah. So I'm going to hold that to a whole nother standard. And that's a whole nother episode. But yeah, out of the seven we have so far, I think seven and two are the best finales. But, anyways. So- Indeed. But, but yeah. Uh, they even reminded us of the crappy one. Yeah, Damian let's not Dark. talk about that. Yeah, let's not talk about him. I just don't, let's not talk about Damian Dark unless we're talking about Legends. Uh, okay. Yeah, or talking about his daughter. Oh, yeah, true. Nora's awesome. Also Legends. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. so... Anyway, Ollie ex Machina shows up, and uh, yeah, I thought his mask had a shitty voice filter. Uh, Spectre has an even worse voice filter. Like... It sounds like, you know how, like, whenever you have, like, a bad connection or you're, like, in a tunnel and you're on, like, a cell phone or whatever and the signal, like, starts to cut and it's like, uh, hey, uh, 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 uh. like, that's what he sounded like in regular speech. And I get it. Like, his consciousness is spread throughout all of the cosmos. He is the agent of vengeance. He literally works for God. But, also, like, he's also... Partly not um, Ollie anymore. Yeah, but also you have the magical power to make your voice sound normal. So you could make your voice sound normal. Yeah. Just saying. Like, your eyes are already glowing. I'm pretty sure, like, gives away that you're magic now. Yeah, I get it, but but still. Um, and I thought his costume was pretty okay. Oh, his costume looked awesome. I loved his costume. I thought that was a really good job. I thought they were just going to put a Jedi robe on him and paint it green. But no, they actually gave him like a full-on costume and the gloves and everything. It was pretty dope. I liked it. Um, yeah. I, I don't like I like I don't like that he didn't actually have a mask. 
but I get it. Like, you know, this is Amel's last hurrah, and, like, you know, you want to see his face. Well, also, Spectre doesn't really have a mask. Well, it's not, like, I mean, kind of. His, I, it, it, he's like Lobo. His face is white. Yeah, and, and yeah, that is true. Um, but, yeah, so Spectre Ollie is like, okay, I know how to beat the anti monitor and he basically dishes out the plan. He goes, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to split into two teams. Team one, we're gonna, you're going to go to the Big Bang, the beginning of time, and fight the Anti-Monitor. Team we'll, two... We'll try to convince gonna, the Monitor from ever going. Yep. So that way, he doesn't actually, like, inadvertently create the Anti-Monitor or release the Anti-Monitor. Yeah. And, you know, if, if that doesn't work... You're just gonna head back to you know beginning of time and join the fight. Cool, cool. Now Barry is like Ollie, man. I gotta get into the Speed Force. The Speed Force is the only way I can help. I need to get recharged. Let me go to the Speed Force. And Ollie's like, I bet. And boop. he like boops Barry on the forehead, and all of a sudden, boom. And this is when like the first. The, probably, honestly, I think the biggest what the fuck of the entire crossover happens. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, Barry goes to the Speed Force, right? You're thinking, okay, it's the Speed Force. We see the Speed Force. A, yeah. He lands in, in Star Labs, but it's got yeah. like a different aspect ratio. It, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely got a, a certain color scheme to it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a little muted, it's a little weird going on here and the, like camera aspects are different and it just looks yeah. weird and you're like what <laughs> the hell is going on did this just become a movie all of a sudden and then i look at and you look and you see all the monitors and shit and how it kind of looks like a like a wannabe makeshift bat cave and i'm like they're not doing and then oh hey man what's up is this like cosplay and you're just like wait what <laughs> Huh? <laughs> what? What now? This, 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 is, this is happening right now. This, yeah, this, it's just like <laughs> does not compute. I, I literally had like an error four hundred two, like file not found. Yeah. Why? Like why? Uh, like honestly, this, I know we got complaints in our first half that like. We just like gushed over every cameo and we're like, didn't really see how like the cameos were just kind of fan service that were quick fan service, didn't really do anything for the plot. This literally did nothing. <laughs> this literally did nothing. And I get it the whole fla flash, flash thing because we hadn't said it yet, but it's Ezra yeah, so Miller. Ezra Miller's Flash shows up. Probably my least favorite member of the Justice League, if I'm being quite honest. Um, um, and I get it, the whole um, Flash, Flash thing. But if they're going to get someone that was in the DCEU, I would have preferred Zachary Levi. Yeah, seriously. Because I feel like he'd better fit. He would, and he would, his freak out reaction would be so much more interesting than Ezra Miller's. And again, Ezra Miller's a great actor. Don't yeah. think I'm hating on Ezra Miller. I like Ezra Miller a lot. Let me just preface that. And honestly, for me personally, that is the best I've ever seen his Flash. Yeah. And again, not just, not just trying to crap on him. Uh, but can you please, can you just... I want you guys, uh, listeners, if you're not already closing your eyes, I want you to just close your eyes and imagine. Just we're just we're just chilling, and all of a sudden Barry pops up on a street in Philadelphia, right? And then, like, and then he see and then he sees this like this kid, and then like who's who like sees this lightning storm or whatever, and it's just like Shazam! What the hell? You're the Flash, but not the Flash. Is that a new costume? Are you trying something out? <laughs> What's going on? Like, yo, come on. That would be awesome. Yes, it, it would have. And, you know, honestly, even though... Even though... 
I would have loved to see them interact. I would have even just accepted like a moment of him flying and seeing like the antimatter wave. Or, you know, I would have totally been cool with like oh or I would have totally been cool with like the antimatter wave like hitting Atlantis and like Alpha Man char- trying to charge at it, like being a badass bro. Like I've accepted Broke Woman. I like Broke Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but but yeah. Also, just quick side note. Do you notice something that that the um the Ezra's Flash says? I told Dick that multiverse exists. No, what I was gonna say was uh he says the what now when he says the flash. Uh- Oh no, he says that when he says the speed force. No. He doesn't know that he's the flash. He doesn't know he's the flash. Oh my god. Yo, this is making me hate that. You they know, never you. named him. They always called him Barry. That's in right. Justice League. That's fucking hell. Oh my oh Jesus. I wonder if this Okay, this is going to turn into, like, a little side Justice League tangent, but I wonder if this confirms the rumor that the Flash movie is actually going to be them re, like, not crisis exactly, but, like, resetting aspects of the universe, which is going to explain our pets and... I've know, heard, like... I've heard that the reports are that it is going to be Flashpoint, but it's going to be kind of like, um, the... TV show Flashpoint, where they take a lot of liberties. Yep. We're not going to see, like, Jeffrey Dean Morgan Batman, even though that'd be fucking awesome. And he's already volunteered to do it multiple and times. Lauren Co- and Lo- Yo, Lauren Cohen Joker? That would be fucking awesome. Yo, can we, yeah. can we, like, get, can we get that animated? Like, I know there was already an animated movie, but can we get that animated? But, but anyway, yeah, so that... That's so, something, yeah. but also so, yeah, that... he doesn't say he doesn't say Dick. By the way, yeah, he says Vic. No, I said Vic. Oh, I thought you said I, Dick. I, I, no, I said Vic. He he doesn't interact with the Titans. Why would I say Dick? I said Vic. Yeah, but uh, but also he doesn't know about the Speed Force. Yeah, that, know. That, that, yeah, that's what that's why I thought that's what you said the when uh, with the what now. Uh, I thought you were talking about when he was like. The Speed no, Force. he doesn't know about Speed Force or that he's the Flash. What does this kid even? He just knows he's in a suit and he can run fast. That's it. Okay. Apparently. God, no wonder you were so terrible. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> oh, believe me, it. It, if we if we could, we would. And I got lots to say. But but yeah. Let's, but let's instead just... of that, we then we then jump to the first ever meeting of Barry and Ollie, which is pretty dope. It's a it's a nice callback to the backdoor pilot, uh, which yep. I loved. Uh, that's still probably uh, one of my favorite backdoor pilots. Uh, from Indeed. the universe, uh, and I, I really liked that they established Barry as a cop first, and like set up his origin story there. I thought it was really cool. Um, and like he got hero experience before he became an actual hero. That's uh, yeah. E- awesome. Even even though there is one downside to that, what their mistreatment of Solomon Grundy. Yeah, a little bit. More and the fact that they bit. never address him ever again. They do that with a lot of villains from early Arrow, if we're being honest. And Indeed. you know that, but but you know what's cool though, and we can talk about this later. But you know what's cool though, with Crisis, all those villains that were done dirty by Arrow can be done better in Green Arrow and the Canaries. If that gets picked up, didn't it get a season order? Not yet. Oh. Wow. Um, Superman and Lois did. Oh, that's what it was. I I, I don't doubt that it's... Uh, I don't doubt 
that is going to though. Uh, we'll, we'll, again, we'll get to that towards the end. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just excited to talk about that. Uh, but yeah, so basically, um, Specter Ollie explains that uh, they were attacked by the Anti Monitor and they got separated, and so Ollie's consciousness is split across um, time and space throughout the Speed Force. Uh, and apparently, Specter. so is the, the other members. Of, yeah, the consciousness of all the different paragons. And so Barry has to basically do a walk down memory lane of their greatest triumphs, um, defeats, failures, and whatnot of all the different paragons. Although Kate doesn't really get one. Kate kind of just gets to intrude on someone else. No. Uh, yeah, but it makes sense for her. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm saying, but I'm saying she doesn't get a personal one. I mean, it, it makes sense for well, her character, yes. Honestly, dude. What was the only other time that she interacted with them? When she yeah. saved them from Arkham. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, when everybody thought whenever when everybody thought she was cool and actually competent. I'm sorry, Kate. I love you, but I'm also she, honest. She was back then though. Yeah. I mean, that's what I said. That's why that's when everybody thought she was cool and actually competent. Um, but yeah, crossovers yeah. have always been her bread and butter. Yeah, no, she's she's like, don't get it twisted, y'all. Kate has done amazing in the crossover. Not too bad. Not much of that is carried over to the main show. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, but uh, yeah. So of course, Ollie, the first time he meets, he goes through their first time, and like that's how he kind of re- uh, reignites himself, kind of. And then, uh, for Ollie, he ends up going to um, the time, like, in the, uh, what's it, uh, Elseworlds crossover? Yeah, it was Elseworlds, where um, he makes the trade for, uh, for Barry and Kara in, uh, for his own life. And so, that's how Barry finds that out. Um, and then he, uh, he awakens Ollie's consciousness, or I guess Spectre's consciousness, Spectre Ollie, yeah, Spectre Ollie, uh, and so that's taken care of. Then we go to Sarah. Uh, well, I'm not going in order. But then we go to Sarah, which is probably my favorite one, if I'm being mm-hmm. honest, because it's it's one of the saddest moments in Arrow. Although it doesn't make any sense, though, logistically, because it's like, how would she be aware that that scene happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there are a lot. There are a lot of studies of like, are you aware of things around you this, a certain time after your death? I mean, not that we could actually study it, but the brain is active for at least a few minutes after death. So I guess you could count that, but that's more than a few minutes. You know, let's not think too hard about it. It was still a cool scene, and it we, was... and it confirmed it confirmed the fact that um. Mark G promised that Katie Cassidy was going to be in the crossover, but she Not wasn't going to be Black Siren. Yeah, and also, I just, I really miss Sarah's Black Canary costume. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, that was so cool. I I remember, I remember just, you know, walking down my own, my own like, fan memory lane here. I remember the massive, massive hate that that episode got because mm-hmm. ev- because everyone in my comments was like, "What the fuck? Why is Laurel gonna be the Black Canary now? They should have just kept it to Sarah, and they should have let Sarah stay with Ollie and let that let, let that be the Black Canary Green Arrow mm-hmm. ship." Which you know, honestly, I wouldn't have minded that if I'm being honest, but also. If that happens, we would have never gotten Legends, and that would have made me very, very sad. Well, yeah, because uh, le- what happened with Sarah was, due to the massive fan backlash, they brought her back. But, yeah, then, once they br- but then once they brought her back, they were like, uh, we don't know what to do with her now. Yeah, because yeah, it's kind of redundant to have the same character, so... Yeah, they literally created an entire show so they could keep Sarah around. Well, and then, 
Well, yeah, they did. They created a whole show to keep side characters who had uh, a couple yeah, side who, characters who had yeah, lost who, their like relevance. Who nothing, yeah, who had nothing to do but were really cool in concept. So, yeah, uh, can thank- Firestorm, Firestorm, Heatwave, Captain, Captain Cold, Cold, Sarah, and Ray. We don't talk about the Hawk people. We do not talk no. about the Hawk people. Yeah. Okay. I I'm wasn't talking about the Hawk people, but... Oh, I, no, I, I know, but, they, but they're part of the original roster, technically, so I just have to make that disclaimer that the Hawk people do not exist in my mind, so therefore we will not mention them other than this one moment. Well, the other moment that I want to say is, uh, now that we have... Now that... Because we're in the spoiler, so we can go ahead and... I can go ahead and say now that the multiverse has been reestablished and that uh, Earth 2 is the way that it is, can we get an Earth 2 Hawk Man or Hawk Girl? Yeah, I would. I mean, or Star like, Girl? That, that makes way more sense because Hawk Man, um, you know, Hawk Man and Hawk Girl like date way back to the JSA. So that would be cool. I'm, I'm hoping that, I mean, I, I liked the guy on Arrow, but. I really would like an actual badass old man version of Wildcat. Like, let's get that for Star Girl. But honestly, you know, uh, we could actually do an entire episode on crisis speculation, uh, post crisis speculation, and that section itself is going to be very, very long. Um, yep. So, we're but gonna I keep will going. just, I'll just go ahead and say right now that in order to equalize time, though. We're gonna cut off and say that that was our speculation for Star Girl. Yeah, th- oh yeah, we're not gonna yeah, we're not gonna talk about Star Girl again. Uh, but uh, anyways, um, so that was Sarah's. I forget what Kara uh, Kara's was. What was Kara? Uh, Kara was part of the team that went to go. Oh talk, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay, their okay, out of it. okay. So those those are all the the people trapped in the Speed Force stuff. Uh, oh well, Kate's was when she got to see Dickhead Ray and Oliver. Um, have their little face on. Yeah, because I legit, in our, we have a little group text where we, we watch and text each other. And I was legit like, you know, I forgot Ray started off as a dick. He was a douche. Like, he was like douchebag Oliver, but with like Felicity intelligence. Because it, it, Felicity has to tell him Oliver's secret. Yet yep. he's gonna be like, "Nah, I'm not gonna turn you into the cops, but you I sucked." Am, yeah, and also I'm gonna take over your company and do it better. Cause I'm, I'm gonna take over your company, and I'm gonna take over your hero life. And, and I'm gonna steal your girl, even though that wasn't your girl exactly yet. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Ray, Ray, Ray was Mister Steel Girl. Like y- y'all, y'all think Ray was out here just being. Go- because you know, Legends is amazing, and I like that portrayal of Ray. But like, Ray was out here getting bitches. <laughs> That's a phrase you know, would say. But Ray was out here getting bitches. Well, I mean, also, uh, technically, beyond Sarah, he is the legend who gets the most action. I mean, that's fair. That's definitely fair. Like. Everybody, everybody else is either like just just kind of doesn't bother with it, or like has failed attempts. Looking at you, Mister. Don't actually use my powers. I'm just random history guy. Or, or you know, channels their frustration into their writing. So there's an actual theory about that, but I must save that for a legend episode. But. Uh, to give you guys a little preview, the theory on that actually is <coughs> that Mick is a romantic, which means like he likes the sex part, but he is not he's not into the idea of relationships. I could I could see that. Yep, it's a it's a it's a form of like the asexual spectrum. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I get it. No, I was just explaining to the audience. Just, yeah, I just, uh, I recently found out about that through. A singer, I forgot their name now. Uh, but yeah, uh, so moving on, uh, yeah, Team B. So Team B, Lex, Kara, 
and Ryan. Uh, they, they are on um, the uh, monitor's world, which, by the way, we get some monitor backstory. We get to see his wife and him doing his original experiment to uh, see the beginning of time, which causes, yeah. which causes the rift to open up, which uh, allows the anti-monitor to escape from the anti-matter universe. Um, and, and apparently the rift causes the, monitor to get mutton chops. Yep, and cosmic because you know you you got to get mutton chops with cosmic power, right? Like, yeah, that totally makes sense. That's not just because it was made in the eighties, apparently. But yeah, um, you know, fashion choices aside, right? Uh, he gets phenomenal cosmic power uh, because uh, he gets exposed to directly to energies from the source wall. They don't ever say this, but that's the actual explanation from the comics. Um, and it looks like they're doing a version of the source wall, but they never say it. Yep. Uh, but, they're probably saving that for later. Um, but Kara, Kara and Ryan and begrudgingly Lex are tasked with the with the task of trying to talk him out of going there in the first place. Can I just say, sassy Kara is my favorite Kara. Indeed. Like, I love that, because... Lex and Ryan build that machine, and she's like, "Oh, well, thank you for volunteering, Lex." Yep, she's like, "Oh, she's like, oh wait, you know, it's untested, and yeah, somebody could die." All right, Lex, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Kara was legit, like, "I volunteer Lex's tribute." Indeed, I, I, I really love you, Kara. I, I really do. Mm. She, when she gets in her sassy mode, she is great, and I, I love it because, like, you know, the whole time she's just talking shit, like. I can't believe you did that to poor Cal. He goes, "Oh, you still mad about your cousin? Stop crying!" And she and she's just like, "You know, I'm just I'm never gonna trust you." He goes, "You know, I'm not gonna, he goes, dude. We're, dude, we're on the same team. I don't I don't want the multiverse to be destroyed either, or I don't want my Earth to be destroyed either. I want it back. It's my Earth too. Well, you know, not Earth too, but my Earth also. But uh, yeah. but yeah, I love that though because they're walking on the monitor's Earth." And he's like, you know, you can just ask me what I want, and I'll tell yeah. you what I want. He goes, he goes, just ask me my plan, and I'll go ahead and tell you. I, I, I don't have any problem at all telling you my plan. He goes, she's he's like, like, okay, okay, Lex, okay, I'll Lex, humor you. I'll humor you. What's your plan? Well, world domination, of course. Not just world domination. Dude. Yeah, universal. Yeah, he said universal domination. My bad. Like, universal domination. I'm I'm so I'm sorry, Lex. I I, I minimized your uh, domination skills. And then he says, My and then he says, "Oh yeah, and by the way, when I took the Book of Destiny, I altered a few things, gave myself a few upgrades." Yep. Also, uh, side note. He literally went on like the like you know the meme like the fuck you fuck you yeah he, he literally did that with uh with Supergirl and Ryan he goes fuck you fuck you also fuck you you're definitely not cool because I'm Lex Luthor and fuck you like, but but legit he just like Iron Man lasers her yeah he he pew pews everywhere and he like uh busts through. This like advanced alien civilization security, like it's child's play. Um, yeah, and and also another weird thing that I only noticed in hindsight. What? Ryan got blasted after Kara, but he wakes up first. Yeah, that was weird. And she's a super person, and he's a regular person. Yeah. Person. Yeah. That is odd. But I do I do like her comment though when they do finally wake up. They're like, we need to get there fast. And she's like, well, Ryan, have you ever flown before? Oh, no, 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 no. You, you didn't, you missed the setup for the joke. Okay, so first, Ryan wakes up and he goes, wow, I've never been not, I'm not unconscious on an alien planet before. And Kara, oh, yeah. Kara wakes up and she's like, uh, it's not much different from getting knocked unconscious on Earth. And, yeah. and, then, and then Ryan's like, well, we got to get to Lex quick. And she, and she looks at Ryan, she goes, hey, Ryan. Have you ever flown on an alien planet before? And he's just like, oh my god. He's like, I haven't flown, period. And she's like, it's easy. It's just up, up, and away. And away. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Like, first off, I just want to just 
a real quick shout out to the people that like criticize us. Again, we, we appreciate the criticism. We appreciate your opinions. But you hear this? I'm giving all the negative. Not just blindly like it, but I got to acknowledge the fun fan service. Yeah. Um, all right. Just saying. Okay. So moving on. Uh, so they get to the monitor and we really real. I mean, I mean, it was clearly set up with, um, you know, Iris and Kara's speech to uh, individual speeches to Ryan, uh, why Ryan was going to be there and what Ryan's job was going to be. Um, and Ryan did his job. He basically was like, Hey, look, man, I know I'm a scientist. I am here for the pursuit of knowledge. That's what you're after. I get it. It's awesome. It's admirable. But look, billions of lives are about to be put in danger because of what you are about to do. Please don't do it. And so the monitor doesn't do it. But meanwhile, while he's not doing that, though, which I love about this is you jump cut between him doing this heartfelt speech and then Lex and Kara kicking the crap out of each other. Which is pretty fun. Yep. Yeah. Um, Until Ryan runs in and he's like, guys, 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 you can stop. He's not doing it. And then we run into Lex, the sun- And then that line from Lex. He, he's like, hey kid, way to ruin an evil plan. Right. He goes, you guys take all the fun out of an evil plan. You know that, right? And it's just like, oh, man. Uh, but also, this is when we get introduced to uh, a very uh, familiar concept. If you are a fan of Doctor Who, we find out that this whole, like, rift in the beginning of time thing, it's a fixed point. So... Well, it's, um... It's he said the... you may have stopped this version, but yeah, there well, were... yeah. it's a multiverse. So... Yeah, so it's a version of a fixed point. It's going to happen somewhere. Yeah. Because there are infinite combinations. There's going to be at least one who does it. And he all... Jay made this joke in our group chat, but he all but says, I am inevitable. He really does! He, I was expecting him to say it. He goes, he goes oh, that's cute. He, this, like, you really trying to stop me? You can't. You couldn't stop me. There's always going to be one. I was like, say it. Just go ahead and say it. I am inevitable. <laughs> like, you know, he wanted to say it. You know they. You know they thought about writing it in the script. They thought about it. They thought about it real hard. Mm-hmm. But so, monitor shows up anyway. Uh, Flash and- takes them all to that point. Yep. And then we fight a bunch of Dementors. Yep. So, this is probably, like, one of my biggest knocks. And, I mean, I get it. It's a big crossover. We're not gonna be fighting a bunch of big villains. It's not like Legends with the whole Legion of Dooms thing. Um, but, um, I, I, and I complained about this with Marvel, too. I hate giant faceless army battles. Eh. They can be done right. Like, okay, they have cool, like, all, all giant faces army battles have cool moments, yes. But there's just, you know they're going to win. Well. Because they're, they're just grunts. If they're fighting, like, the, the big guys, okay, then there's some stakes there. But, like, it's just all grunts. Um, I think who did it best was, like, Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, I mean there's, but like that's, but they also had fodder. It wasn't just like, you know, it wasn't just main characters, uh, just main characters against a bunch of fodder soldiers. They had their own fodder to balance out the fodder of the bad guys. You know what I'm saying? True, true. Um, that's the that's the key to actually doing the faceless, ar- the massive faceless army. Battle. I mean, even when you go to like Infinity War. And Endgame, we had, like, the Wakanda soldiers, which are kind of... I mean, yeah, you yeah, you can argue that. Just don't say that too loud. <laughs> but, yeah, so, mo- moving on, uh, 
we get the Dementor battle, and then, you know, Spectre, Ollie, and the Anti-Monitor have a, like, a, a Dragon Ball Z beam clash, because they uh, can do that? It's... Apparently so. Uh, well, um, we already knew that Anti Monitor could do it. Well, cause... we knew Anti Monitor could do it, and I know that Ollie is like the an agent of God, and he has basically nigh infinite power given uh, under his domain. But, and I'm not saying we need to see a scene of him training with it because, like, you, I guess you kind of automatically know what your powers are when you're gifted with the powers of the Spectre. But, like, also, bro, you had you had you had a green Kamehameha. And you didn't think to use that when they first when he first attacked y'all. Well, also, also when he first like set the Dementors and all that, Ollie just stood by him and they had a conversation. That's what I'm saying. Why and then Ollie Kamehameha? jumped up in the air. Yeah, why don't you just Kamehameha him in the face? Like Dragon Ball Z rules do not apply. You don't. You do not let. You do not just sit here and let your enemy charge. But anyway, so they do that. And they get, like, really super close to each other. And Ollie does a fire in my laser. Actually, you know, you know what it was more like? It's not even a Dragon Ball Z thing. And I'm thinking about this because he literally summons Dementors. It's literally the, the wand magic clash between Harry and Voldemort. When Harry and Voldemort have, like, you know, the same core wand, so they repel each other. And... You know, it's funny because, like, one of them has green magic, so it's kind of, it's, it's literally, the same. oh my god, it's actually the same thing. Wow. Well, then, then, like I said, to go to another place that isn't Harry Potter or Dragon Ball Z, it's actually internet meme. Yeah, Oliver fire does laser. the far and my laser. Pretty much. Um, and this is his, like, <laughs> not official death, because we know he's not dead, because the Spectre can't die, spoiler alert. Because, you know, when you work for God, you know, you kind of transcend death. Just saying. That's kind of one of the perks to working directly for God. Um, But, yeah, Ollie seemingly gets bodied. Well, um, he does this after, like, um, I almost called her Katie. Uh, Sarah notices that this is the, this is the moment that he was talking about before. Yeah. Where. Oh, oh, yeah. Fan the flame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the signal. And Lex actually stops the shit and actually, like comes to his senses and realizes what's going on and that he needs the help. Yep. And tells them about what's going on and what they need to do. And so they they all join hands and do like kumbaya power. I w- so I'm a little upset that no one formed a giant Debo. Just saying. Well, uh, we did get... A giant Bebo. I mean, we later got a giant Bebo, but I'm upset that you know we joined hands again and had magic involved, but no giant Bebo Voltron. Nope. But um, to be fair, to be fair, one of the, one of the best parts about that was the was the popcorn gallery gang that was cheering them on. That's true. That's and we true. didn't have that. This time. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been as funny, and I think it would have taken away from it because like this yeah. is a more serious event. So yeah, fair. But you know, I'm always down for Kaiju Bebo. Just saying. Mm-hmm. There, there's never a wrong time for Kaiju. But but then yeah, Sarah Sarah looks at Barry and says, "You, we need to go there now." Yep. So he wishes he wishes Sarah over there. And, you know, they. Uh, I'm glad it's them. I'm glad it's them. Because they are the two people closest to Oliver. You know, Sarah. That are still with, alive. That are still alive. And, you know, um, are actively in his life. Well, I mean, his wife, daughter, son. I'm talking about his, like, his. I'm talking about his, um, like, his sister. Like, because, like, that, that had, like, been with him from jump. 
his yeah, wife, that too. Daughter, his wife, daughter, and son have not been with him from jump. Thea too. Yeah, I was talking. Yeah, that's who I was talking about. Um, but but yeah. Um. Anyway, you do get the reason why though. In his final speech, why it is the two of them. Oh, yeah? And it's because he is past, they are passing on the torch of, like, the leader of the Arrowverse to them. Which is awesome, because, you know, obviously it makes sense for Barry, because, uh, you know, Barry was the second show in the Arrowverse, so, duh. Um, and Sarah and Legends is, I, I think, because if you ask, Arrow, you know, Arrowverse fans, I think Legends is the only one that is universally loved. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, just this last week, uh, Comic Book Resources, which is um, an argument on its own, uh, they released an article saying, sorry, still, even after Crisis, Legends is the best show. Yeah, no one the is best having Arrowverse. more... I, I was it come. I don't know if it was CBR or comicbook.com, but one of the sites was like, "No one is having more fun than Legends of Tomorrow," and that is just the truth. Yep. Like, but yeah. So I think it was cool, and they obviously had a nice moment, and they had uh, the thank you, Ollie, was really really touching. And that's how you go out. You don't go out in the beginning of the event. Admittedly, still like a G. Still like a G, but you don't go out in the beginning of the of the event. You go out in the big fuck off battle. Mm-hmm. But he didn't actually go out because you know Spectre. He's gonna be around, you guys. Like Amel is gonna be here. He, uh, but he's not gonna be here here. Also, we do have another full special, uh, uh, like, finale afterwards, yeah. no way he's not gonna be in there in some sp- part. Yeah, he's you know, he's definitely gonna be like, they're gonna be, they're gonna be some flashbacks obviously, or, 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 or like some reshot flashbacks and, you know, you know damn well he's gonna have one last monologue. They gotta give my man one last monologue cause his monologue game is probably top tier of the Arrowverse uh, and like he has come a very very long way. Mm-hmm. And also, I I was kind of disappointed with uh, Green Air and the Canaries that they didn't really have a monologue. I was upset. With that. I was upset with that. I mean, I know that's kind of the trope of the CW that every every show in the CW opens up with a character voiceover. But come on, give us the character voiceover. Let Laurel do the character voiceover thingy. I want a sassy character voiceover thingy. Uh, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. Um, so, big fuck-off battle is over. Cool. For the most part. Then, you know, it's like, okay, yay! What do we do now, guys? It, it's like It's like, okay, final battle's over. We still have a whole nother part. Yep. It's like, well, what's going to happen now? And then it's just like, oh, you thought it was over. Nah, fam. Nope. So, Kara wakes up, right? And she's in National City. And she's like, oh, shit. Wait, crisis. Oh, multiverse. Beginning of time. What the fuck? Plant, this whole universe has been wiped away. What's going on? And then she's just like, what's happening? And she starts to think that it's a dream. Yep. But then she real, but then she realizes it's not. And then like Nia's like, hey, Kara, you're gonna miss the big story if Andre, you know, if you know, you're not here, um, and to cover it, Andre is gonna be pissed. You got to get over here real quick. And so it it's at the Nobel Peace Prize. Award. That's what she says. Yep, yep. And, then, and so she zips over. She goes, "Okay, who's getting it?" And it's just like, "Why, of course, the, the best man in the world." Lex and she's Luthor. like, "Who is that?" And then it's like, "And we give this award to Lex Luthor." And I'm just, and we're all and you know the fandom, and especially the fandom and Kara all simultaneously go, "The fuck." Mm-hmm. And then. 
uh, you know, super core fans get a glimmer of hope that is just instantly dashed away. Because because, because uh, that was on Supergirl, though. No, this was on this was on the episode. This was on the episode because Alex says, "What are you talking about? Lex and Lena are your biggest supporters." Yeah, but then that's get dashed on Supergirl. That, that, yeah, no, but I'm saying, but yeah, but, that, but that's what. Oh, I, mean, I get what right, you're right? saying. Yeah. Yeah. You get a little bit of hope on Crisis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You're like, you're like, you know, Supercore fans got one little glimmer of hope for like five seconds, and then like literally the next day, or not the next day, but the next week, it's like, okay, cool, Lena's finally off her bullshit. The first five minutes, she's back on her bullshit. Mm-hmm. Great. Just oh, and crazy. it gets worse. We'll get into that. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, but, but yeah, so back to clear, back to this though. So, so it, it it leads to a really cool scene. So you know, Kara is just stressing out. She's like, "Okay, I need to know what the fuck is going on." Jean, Jean is like, "Let me explain to you what the fuck is going on." Well, because uh, before Jean comes up, though, she goes back to the DEO to try to figure out what's going on, and notices on the ground it says DEO LexCorp. Yep, funded by Lex Luthor. And it's just like, what? What? And, nope. And it's like, Alex is like, what are you talking about? Lex Luthor is the greatest man alive. Uh, and Kara literally just like throws up in her mouth. And then John John comes up and it's like, John, please tell me you're not a Lex Luthor fanboy too. It, and she's goes, like, oh. I feel like I'm going crazy. You're not crazy. Yep. Thank you, Space Dad. Thank you, Space Dad. And he um, goes, I've, I've been going around, like, you know, helping out our allies. He goes, you know, um, I'm, you know, and she goes, wait, why are we the only ones who remember this? He goes, what were we that everybody else wasn't? And she goes, oh, duh, Paragons. Yeah. And then he proceeds to wake up Alex. Yep. Wait, wait does he? He does wake up Alex. No, wait, no. He wakes up Alex between the crossover and the Supergirl episode. Cause... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, the only one he wakes up is Nia, because Nia's the one in the... Oh, no, Alex, too, because Alex is in the fight. No, Alex and Nia are in the fight just because they believe Kara, and they're like, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, okay, okay. I, I thought they were woken up, and that's why they were in the fight. Because I, no. I, I know that's why Team Arrow is in the fight. Yeah, uh, but th- that's why they specifically, when they open up Supergirl's episode, Alex talks about everyone that Jean woke up. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Okay, yeah, I didn't. I don't that's have why in our group chat, I was like, this reminds me of the meme. I don't know what's going on, but I'll sure act like I do. Yep, but uh, so, like, literally, uh, Kara is so frustrated. She's like, all right, I gotta go hit something now. And they're like, there's someone being attacked at the harbor or something. Yeah, yeah, at the pier. And she goes, pier. okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it. And then she, like, zooms over there. And it's Weather Witch. And I'm just like, okay. And she doesn't know who she is. Yeah, she's and like. And <laughs> Weather Witch actually s- sounds like her, like, she should know who she is. Yep. Yeah, she's like, Supergirl. It's like, we, like they've run into each other before. Like, oh, you're not going to stop me this time, Supergirl. And she's like. I'm sorry. Who are you? And then, li- and then, literally, it's like on cue. Boop. Sorry, she's one of mine. Yep, Barry. Barry knocks her out and is like, "Sorry, she is one of mine." And, and it's then, like, "What they, are you doing on Myers?" No, the, the, they literally both have a double take. He goes, "Wait, she's one of yours, but this is Myers." This is like Myers. I thought you were on Myers. And then. And then when they're all as confused as hell, a nice older man yeah, steps yeah, up. Yeah, so the civilian who was being attacked, like, thanks them for saving his life. And he goes, oh my god, the Flash and Supergirl. Like, it's so cool whenever I, whenever we get to see you guys working together. He goes, wait, whenever we see you guys working together? Do we work together often? And she, he goes... Yeah, you know, for the important things, for sure. I mean, sometimes you got, like, a legend or two hanging around in the Green Arrow, uh, or, but... Yeah. But, And yeah. by the way, just as a quick side note, um, the image that he hands them 
I could be wrong, but I believe it's an image that like Grant and Melissa took for the first crossover ever of them two. Yep. And uh, you know, and uh, so he, you know, he's asking for their autograph and stuff. He they give him his autograph. He's like, "Can you make that out to Marv?" M A R V. Now, for those of you guys who just watch Arrowverse stuff and don't actually read the comics, let me just explain to you how fucking cool that is. <laughs> let me explain to you how fucking cool that is. I'm going to spend like five minutes just geeking the fuck out. Well, because it's not just a reference. Yep. So, it's not just any old guy, right? Let me tell you a little something about a guy by the name of Marv the Man. Wolfman. I came up with the man part. I don't know if that's his actual nickname, but he is the man. Uh, so Marv The Wolfman, legend. Marv Wolfman is the man, the myth, the legend. He is the guy who has like just had one of the most storied careers in all of comics for both Marvel and DC, but most notably for DC. Because he Wolfman, he wrote a little thing and he helped create a little thing that you might know. Yeah, you know, um, it's a it's called a Crisis on Infinite Earths. You know, you you, you might have been you might have just watched it. You, it's you know, no, no big deal. He kind of just drew the whole thing. Also, he uh, helped to revitalize a certain forgotten team from the '60s when a certain other team of teenagers was getting real popular at Marvel. Um. Oh, they're called the, the the team team, the 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 team champion, the team champions, the, the team team titans. titans, the team titans. That's what it was. Yeah, you know. Which, by the way, for those that don't know, team titans is an actual legit thing too. Yep. So yeah, it's. I mean. I feel like Teen Titans is way more known than Crisis on Infinite Earths. I mean, even though that's the title yeah. of the episode, because like. Most people know the cartoon. Indeed. Uh, but yeah, Wolfman is that guy. He is the mm-hmm. guy. And like, you know, we've had plenty of like references to writers before. Like Ryan's daughter is literally named Simone after Gail Simone, one of the creators of Ryan Troy. Um, and also in an episode of Arrow, I think it was, they had uh, Simone Industries. And they had, like, Perez Boulevard. A lot of the streets are named after comic creators. Um, you know, stuff like that. There's actually, like, a there's a street named after Marv, too. Uh, but it was so cool seeing Marv and him, getting hit, seeing him, like, geek out over his own creations and shit. Mm-hmm. Because how, awesome. how many times do you have that where you get to see your own creation, like, live action in front of you? I'm just saying... I mean, I know Keenan's busy and he's huge, but do you know how awesome it would be if Marv Wolfman got to meet Wally West? Mm-hmm. Because Marv Wolfman is the one that put Wally on the map. Love that guy, man. He's mm-hmm. so awesome, and he's a really nice dude at conventions. It's like he's like a, he's like a he's like you know that that cool grandpa that has all the dope stories and can draw really well. But yeah, so yeah, really nice gentleman. If you ever meet him at a convention, definitely go to his table. That's cool. But yeah, back to the story though. Once they hear this and all, yeah, they realize. Oh, so wait, it's not a multiple Earth thing anymore. It's just one Earth. And they and rush all... over to the Arrow Cave to see what's going on. Yep, and then so that's when Team Arrow is woken up. And, um, of course... I, I love I love Renee. He's like Alien John filled yeah, us not... in. Yeah. Um, regular John is still processing. <laughs> and he goes, why am, I, why am I regular John? He doesn't say it out loud, but he gives Renee a face like, wait, I'm regular John? But yeah, because like you know, of course, when Sarah figures this out, because uh, this is it, it, this is the Legends episode where this happens. When Sarah figures this out, Sarah just like, like I don't know what happened. Maybe it's because of her like connection to the Legends or everything. But Sarah just automatically remembers and just I mean, knows everything. Oh yeah, I mean that's true. But also, uh, but yeah, so she she's just like, oh shit! If this is the she case, wakes up in the streets of Star City and is like, what the. F- Going on, and then, 
and then when she sees like Kara and Barry fighting together, and she realizes, oh shit, like we're we're doing a thing. Uh, we're clearly all one Earth now. And also, just a side note in that scene, I I like I love I love that they were continuing to see just like by Kara, like just. Kara's massive, undeniable crush on Kate. Because, you know, she's excited when Barry's here. She's like, oh, cool. Hey, Barry. What's up? She's like, you know, you know, Sarah's here. Hey, Sarah. And well, then, you know, just a certain bat person swings in. Oh, yay, Kate's here! That That's later on in the episode. I know, but, you know, it's still, it's still fun. But yeah, anyway. so they meet up at the Arrow Cave because Sarah's trying to figure out, like... Yeah. She she it, makes a she makes a beeline because she's like wait okay so if the Earths are back maybe Ollie's back yep and so she gets there and everybody's all sad and if they figure out that Ollie's gone and then and then you Kara know, and Barry show up and they're like everyone's back where's oh not everyone yep. Also, I love that Sarah. I'm I'm glad that Sarah addresses it because Sarah's like, no, 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 no. You guys don't get it. He's a magical person now. Yes. I, I mean, it, it's hard to explain, but we've been dealing a lot with magical magical stuff lately. He's a magical person now. You can't detect him with regular technology, which you know she's accurate. She's telling the truth, but like, he's not going to be detected unless he wants to be detected. So, for all intents and purposes, he's gone. And Sarah takes this hard. Everybody takes it hard. Uh, we they all, they all have like a they all have like a goodbye to Oliver moment. Um, but 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 before they can get too gushy, uh, beeping on the arrow cave, there's an yeah. attack. Not just any attack, Brian. A very very huggable attack. Which I love that because Dig is like, oh my god, that, that 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 is my that's my favorite line. She um, because like, and because Sarah, because we see on the screen it's a giant Bebo, and then Sarah's just like again, and then John looks at her just and says again, and he looks at that thing. He goes, "I am never letting my child watch this show ever again." Also, um, side note, uh, this was in the Legends episode. Um, this was in the leg. Uh, no, this wasn't the leg. Yeah, this was in the Legends episode for the for the premiere episode two. Uh, but apparently, Ryan Reynolds is playing Detective Bebo. So that's cool. Okay. Yeah, like it's it's a it's a little it's a little blurb you hear on the TV. Ryan Reynolds is uh, signed up to play Detective Bebo. Oh, <laughs> nice. I didn't even catch that, but but yeah. So they're like. They're like, uh, she even calls up to the ship, and we get a cameo from Nate, Nate and Ava. Yep. I also like. I also like that. Like Nate asks Ray about. It. He goes, "Oh yeah, it was awesome, man. There were there, that's like there were there were like a bunch of other super people, and uh, there was another me, and there was a super me." Yep. He goes, "A super you." It's like, yeah, and, super me. And I like that on on Legends when they're talking about this because this doesn't happen to like the Legends yeah, yeah, premiere. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is a Legends premiere. We're mixing things and, up. And 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 I like it where where Nate's just like, well, you know, real Superman wasn't there, so you know, and he's like, no, he was there. He was me. <laughs> and it's like, what? What? Well, because they also had their Superman there too. Remember? Yeah, yeah, I know. But. But yeah, so Sarah calls up to the ship and is like, "Is Bayrod still there?" Yep. Because she's starting to think that maybe it could be the the whole the Voltron hate- Bebo thing. Yep. Even though it doesn't really make sense because she's not there. Yeah, because like they need all but, of them. Yep. But they're like, "No, he's still on the ship," and. They're like, okay, so, uh, and then they go there, and this Bebo oh. isn't as happy as the other Bebo. And also, you know, it uh, it ruins somebody's day, 
and they definitely got to pay for that. And that person is, of course, my guy, Mick Rory. <laughs> it fucks up. Because Ava, Ava was like, do you want us to go over there and help? And Sarah's like, no, enough of us have been roped in. You guys don't have to come. And no, you Ava's guys are like, good. well, Mick's well, in the area. There is already one person in the area. And then we, and we see the, he's at a Barnes and Nobles doing a book signing. And I even love it. There's a middle-aged woman there saying, should I call you Rebecca or... And he's like, Rebecca's fine. Rebecca's fine. Um, and I, I love that it's... Uh, no, it's not even in a bar Nobles. I think it's in Jitters, which is hilarious because they literally have, like, villain drinks named after him. So, that that's hilarious. Like, but can I yes. get a you get a free heat wave with your signed copy of, uh, you know, Rebecca Silver's latest novel. I I I imagine that a heat wave is like a hot coffee drink that somehow has like a cayenne kick to it. I was gonna I was gonna say it was hot chocolate with a little bit of cayenne in it. Yep, indeed. But but yeah, um, but so he's like, nope, he done fucked up my day. <laughs> this thing is going down. Verbal. And it leads to one of my favorite moments, and I did not know I was going to ship it until I started shipping it. Uh, we got, like, a really awesome team-up of, like, three of the most unlikely characters that I just want to have us... I want them to have a side team. So we got Jefferson Pierce, we got Mick Rory, and we got Caitlin Snow, Killer Frost. Um, I really ship Caitlyn or, or Frost and Mick. That was later in the episode, but yeah. Yeah, uh, we're jumping around. We're jumping around. We, it, does, it doesn't really matter. We're going. But going I do want to say one order. thing though about fighting the giant Beeble and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, two things: one, like how excited Kara got when Kate showed up. Yeah, that was that was adorable. And, and then also the fact that when they figure out what's going on. Because yep. you know who was who that was, right? That wasn't Abracadabra, was it? Was it Abracadabra? Yeah. No, that was. It I it mean, was Abracadabra, but it was a new post crisis Abracadabra yeah, played yeah, by that, a different yeah. actor. Yeah, I was gonna say, and I was like, that's not Abracadabra, Abracadabra, because like that other one was kind of lame and didn't actually have like magic magic or this. This is a new post crisis. Yeah, and he had the proper outfit. I was like, that has to be Abracadabra, right? Yeah, that was awesome. Love that. Um, um, that was cool. Um, and it's then after the whole big fight scene, though, that they think yet again they think the day is saved that they're all done, and so they take a breather. And Barry and Barry and yeah, Barry and Sarah have their have, have their a little heart to heart. Which is awesome. They they have a friendship that I didn't expect to, to love as much as I do, but I like. Oh my god, it's indeed. Great. And they talk about like how why Oliver's death is so hitting hard for her, and why Ollie like how much Ollie has impacted Barry's life, and how much you know Ollie means to him. Yep. And they have this nice, like, really good heart to heart where Grant and Katie are on their a game, but yeah. then. It gets cut by a Dementor. Yeah, like, uh, see, this is why the, I feel like they made the wrong move. What they should have done, instead of taking Abracadabra to jail, they should have got Abracadabra and been <laughs> like, hey, bro, can you teach us how to cast the Patronus? Just real quick. I'm well, also, betting- to be fair, they didn't think that they'd ever have to deal with them again. Yep. But, but yeah, I love it though, because then they have, after, after all that, they regroup and they're, and they're like, so the Dementors are only going after the Paragons. And then they look around and they're like, oh, fuck, Ryan. We're all, yep. <laughs> and then, yeah, he, he's running with his baby. And he's trying to, to, and then all of a sudden, bam, pew, pew, Sarah. Yep, that was awesome. Sarah comes in with her bow staff. 
Yeah, I I don't know. I made the pew pew sound, but it was I was supposed to be like a katonk. But you know, but yeah, and then I love it. He's like Sarah. Yay! Yeah, that was awesome. It's not not foreshadowing. He's gonna be a legend at all. No, I mean, not in was, any way at all. Wink, wink, the, nudge, nudge. Yeah, he was definitely not rescued by the captain on purpose. But anyway, so he comes back with with them, Sans baby, because he uh, probably gave it over to his wife. Although, although, can I just say, I wish. I mean, I know there are implications at the end of Crisis, but if you know that wasn't the case, I kind of wish. That, you know, if a certain thing happens that we get acknowledged at the end didn't happen, then we could have saw Ryan's baby and baby John. But, you know, a certain thing happens later that we'll talk about. But but anyway, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, um, really enjoyed that. Um, I, I, I just I just like to see them all work together, man. It doesn't have to be anything huge. I just like seeing the little team ups. And, and also, th- this also leads to the fact of um, everybody. Everybody's now getting their memories back, and they're like Nash. Yep, fucking okay. Nash. Because <laughs> everybody's pissed at Nash. Because fucking Nash, you, you, you And this is all this is things. when we get the team up of Heatwave, Jefferson, and Frost. Yep. yep. And then Space Dad comes in. Wakes up, Nat and Nash. Nash because, just like woke yeah, up in no, the sewer yeah. with no memory, and then and, and then they and then they start shaking him down. He goes, "The fuck are you guys doing? I don't know. I don't know either of you people." And and then Space Dad comes in and is just like, "Screw this!" Wakes yep. him up, and instantly he goes yeah. from "fuck yeah. you" to "Oh my god, what the fuck did I do?" I'm he goes, so sorry. He goes, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." But also. Like, John is just like, I have no time for your shit, Nash Wells. <laughs> I've yep. already, you've already put me through way too much. Yep. Boom. Yeah, he's just like, oh my, my bad, y'all. I'm so sorry. You guys actually fixed it. Yay. Thank you, I guess. Sort of. Like, and, that's but of then, but he then he's time. like, but then he's like, yeah, guys, you think you saved the day? Nope. Antimatter still exists. There's something going on. Yep. I can still detect it with my antimatter detector. And so they, so that is like the real, real last save the day thing. And they're like, oh, hell, how are we going to take out, how are we going to take out Antimonitor? If Spectre Ollie couldn't do it, yep. and then the current Adam and the future Adam come up with a plan, uh, which is like, uh, which is like the go-to plan for everything. I mean, like, look at how everybody was assuming Thanos was going to get defeated with the Infinity Gauntlet. The plan was, we go and shrink it. We go and shrink. Shrinking solves everything. <laughs> And no, but this right. time, instead of us shrinking to save the day, they're like, "Yeah, what if we don't defeat him? What if we just shrink him?" Yeah, we just keep him shrinking forever. That was a problem that my suit kept running into in the early stages. We could just trap, we could just trap him in the uh, what I call the miniverse. And uh, then Ryan's like, he, he calls it the atomverse. Oh, uh, the atomverse. He goes, uh, and then Ryan's like, "Oh, I call it the microverse." He goes, "Oh, that's better. There might be a little trademarking issue, but that's better." <laughs> Which I was like, oh, okay, I, I see you. Yep. Because Ant Man, Ant Man's kind of the most underrated of the uh, of the MCU movies, so maybe people are gonna miss that. But I saw it. Which, by the way, um, something is going on with Marvel and DC currently, because if you look in the comics, they are making a lot of direct references to each other. Okay, so. Real quick, uh, th- uh, this is uh, a side tangent, um, but uh, but I <laughs> I brought this up on the Batwoman podcast, and so this is my theory, right? So I think that in the Marvel universe, the DC comics are a thing, 
and then in the DC universe, the Marvel comics and Marvel movies are a thing. That's good. I I get that, but clear clearly something is going on. Um, when they did the whole multiverse thing earlier in Marvel, they kind of hinted that the DC universe was a thing. Yep, and. But- that's just comic news. So, but yeah, we that's, go that, back yeah, to that, that, that side nerd talk. I was, I, but I was talking specifically TV because, like, they've mentioned they've mentioned bat, like Marvel has mentioned Batman several times. Like, uh, D, like Arrowverse shows have mentioned Spider Man, Hulk, and Iron Man. Yeah, and also it is an interesting twist, though that um, that Cisco Ramon has been known to wear a Bazinga shirt or two, and his favorite character is the Flash. Yep. So, so. That, yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, so moving on. Uh, so they go they go through their, with their plan. Um, obviously, like, we got, a, we got, like, a super people team up with Clark and Kara punching giant kaiju anti-monitor, which, by the way, the anti-monitor is now a giant kaiju. Because why Yeah, not? and we even... We even get a moment where Kara has that, like, fuck it, I'm gonna sacrifice myself type moment before before Ray starts up and he's like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. We, we got fixed. the device ready. Also, can I just say, uh, this? Uh, I am, I was so glad that like, we had a science bro team up, and they were like, oh yeah, Barry, you're a scientist too, and you have super speed. Build this for us, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like you're a scientist. Like people forget Barry is a scientist. Like, guys, I know he's a super I know he's a speedster and he likes to punch things, but also he's a scientist. Remember. Like, he's a super smart character. And they did remember. And Lex was super impressed. He goes, no no no. Oh wow, that's perfect. Yep. And I, I love Barry's joke. So he's like, "So I press this, but oh, I'm just kidding. I got it." Yeah, because he's like, "So I don't press this," and they're like, "No, no, 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 no." Ah, I got. You. Even Lex was like, "No." Yep. But he's like, "No, nah, I'm kidding." And then, and then he's like, "Ray, you're gonna need to come with me." And he grabs Ray and zooms off. Yeah, which that had to be a cool moment for Ray. Indeed. Yep. <laughs> and so he gets, so you know they they like atom bomb, you know literally, um, the anti. But but not before a little side effect accidentally happens because the anti monitor happened to be holding somebody when he started shrinking. Oh yeah, a very special super somebody. Uh huh. <laughs> oh man, main universe Clark, and I love it because yeah. Cora's yeah. like, oh, "Where's no. Cal? Where's Cal?" He goes, "Right here, guys." And he goes, "I got you, Mister Kent." <laughs> well, Ray, Ray's like, Ray's like, ooh, oh. Sorry about that. I know, Just a minute, yeah, yeah. Miss Superman. Uh, no, he says Mr. Kent. He's like, my bad, Mr. Kent. And then he just zips yeah, him he, back to normal. Which is pretty funny. Uh which it's it's a it's a fun little like fan service moment because like Superman shrinks down a lot because he has a lot of adventures in the bottled city of Candor. Um which is kind of referenced in the Supergirl mid, uh, you know, mid-season premiere, but you know, we're not going to talk too in-depth about it. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And so, you know, the, and so once again, the day is saved. And so they're having a celebration party. And I, I, so I have another question. This is another one of like my many, my many like Arrowverse logistics question. So... Barry legally owns Star Labs, correct? I right. believe so. It's been established that Barry legally owns Star Labs. Yeah. All right. 
and like they make money off of the contracts that they have with like the the, the police and stuff with all the meta technology and the prison stuff, right? Okay. How the fuck does Barry own like a whole other facility that's just chilling? Um apparently it's a subsidiary. It's a former it was a subsidiary of Star Labs that had broken that's, down. Oh yeah, that shut down. And so they use this other building. Uh, you know, it's 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 more. It's not even a building. It's more of a hall, per se. That we've seen before. You know, um, a, a certain um, a, a hall of justice, maybe. That was used in invasion. Remember? Yeah, I know it was used in invasion, and also, um, also like um, it uh, when you when you see when we saw like the little the tiny tiny like not directly named the justice league like drops and the small images that we got of gideon we saw like the table and stuff Uh huh. so like we knew this was eventually going to be a thing now of course they don't ever say like we're gonna call ourselves the justice league but they got like the chairs also like barry when did you have time to get like custom monogram chairs yeah, but I love that though because he's like, "Hey, I brought you all here." They have the the memorial for Oliver, yep, and all of that, and that's really cool. And yep. then, and then he's like, "But that's not all." And, and he's like, he, he he takes out the table, he, like he takes out the tablecloth, big ass table. Yeah, but I love it though because even in the like previous things, they they never foreshadowed this and. Because how could they have known it? But Jeff is a part of the team. Which, though, I mean, he is actually mentioned in the Crisis article. Like, in the changed one. He, I think he's listed. Or No, he, no, I don't think he was. Cause they, yeah, because they hadn't settled it yet. Uh, but Batwoman it, is, though. Yeah, yeah, Batwoman is. It's pretty freaking awesome seeing that Jeff is there. Uh, they all just have, they all have custom monogram chairs. And of course, they leave Ollie's empty, out of respect, for now. Which I got a feeling that we're eventually, if and when Black Canary, I just said Black Canary, uh, Green Arrow and the Canaries gets greenlit, we could see that resurface. But I have a feeling that um, Oliver's little. Tribute isn't going to be the only one there. Nope, for sure. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, uh, so, um, you know, enough beating around the bush. They're the super friends. They, they don't even, they don't even try to play around with it. They're the super friends. Oh, they even, they even do like a straight they up. Do a, they a shot for shot, like of the, uh, you know. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, that and type of thing. and. They we hint hear, at a certain yeah, character. Yeah, we hear the screeches of a certain character, and they're like, "What?" And then Jeff is literally like, "What the hell is that?" And then you know Barry looks at the cage, like Barry is like, "Oh no!" And then you you see an open cage. Uh, for those of you guys who with you know, a certain name tag on it. Yeah, for those of you guys who do not know and maybe did not grow up with parents who watched the cartoon or did not watch the cartoon yourselves, uh, the Wonder Twins had a pet monkey. That is the one twins pet monkey. Yep. And uh, from what I've heard, there was discussion about bringing the Wonder Twins in. They, they wasn't weren't they in talks for Legends, or was it like Flash? I know it was one of those two. Maybe, but also they were in talks to debut in Crisis. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so we got the Super Friends, y'all. I mean, we already have the Legion of Doom, so I, that, that's why we're calling it the Super Friends because the Legion of Doom exists, kind of. Uh, which I hope that, that it gets brought back uh, and has Lex this time because that would be super interesting. That's what I want the next thing to be. I don't because okay, so now that we're uh, like in kind of the wrap up portion. Uh, I want to just talk about, like, overall thoughts before we get into speculation and some of the mid-season premiere stuff. 
Um, so, honestly, you know, as cool as this, like, end game scale, massive, multiversal crossover is, I, this proves to me one thing and one thing for sure. Um, what I really love as a fan are the small scale crossovers. Like, I want some of that. Give me more of that. And also, like, I want the next crossover to be a Legion of Doom versus Super <coughs> Super Friends type deal. Like, maybe we don't get Damien Dark, but I would love to get Damien Dark, because, like, Dam- Mal- uh, you know, McDowell is awesome. He's awesome when he's not being written by those particular writers. But, you know, Legends people, just, just let it be a Legends episode so the Legends writers can do it. Indeed. But, yeah, so I, that's personally what I would like, and I just want more smaller crossovers. Like, of course, like Tara and Kate. I'd love to see Wally, I'm um, not Wally, I'd love to see Barry work with the Legends more. Because, you know, Barry fucks with time travel. They fucks with time travel. I mean, they still have yet to to address one big thing from Legends that involves Barry. Oh, yeah, Flashpoint? No. Oh, the message. Well, not just that, but also the fact. Barry invented Gideon. Oh, yeah. Duh. Mhm. Yep, there is that. Which would be which would be pretty fun. Um yeah, I want ba- I want Barry to interact with the legends cuz we see that Barry and Sarah have a, a fun relationship that I would like to explore more. And you know, it's a relationship that Ava doesn't have to get jealous of cuz you know, Ava, apparently that's like Ava's only function nowadays. And I tell you one thing that I would like to see, especially now that they're on the same earth. What? Barry and Jeff. Ooh. Because they had a good moment in part one of the crossover. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they bonded over Dead Dad Club. Yeah. They bonded over Dead Dad Club. I, I, I do would, li- I would like to see more of that. And they both have lightning powers. You know, in a technical sense for Barry, but, you know, lightning powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. What are some other small crossovers? I mean, Kate and Tara is obvious, because, duh. <laughs> They've, like, already confirmed that that's going to be a thing. Yep. Um, of course, uh, there are going to be Superman, Supergirl crossovers, because they're in the same family, quite literally. Um, yeah, and also, uh, Legends is time travel, so uh, Green Arrow and the Canaries? Yeah, for sure. That's one I definitely want to see. Well, you know, especially we because... Um, um, they they specifically mention if you guys watch that movie, you know, if you guys watch that backdoor pilot, that um they basically all but confirm that that's how Laurel is there is because of yeah the because yeah because Laurel I mean because Laurel was on the wave rider yeah and then um because they also never confirm what Earth Laurel is from or where where Laurel lives now. Well, uh, they did confirm that she is Black Siren. Oh, yeah. Because she uses that as a way to convince Mia. Uh She's like, I used to not do this stuff. But, but yeah, um, and Dinah, Dinah confirmed that, that Sarah came to her multiple times. Yep. Asking if she wanted her to take her to modern day. But yeah, you know, she was like, "No, nah, I'm cool here." Uh, so we know, we know that like one of the effects of crisis is that like some people got like transported. Well, it was a delayed effect of crisis, but the instant thing was apparently due to crisis. The world now lo- no longer knows who Black Canary is. Yeah, which is why, which I I love how that's like an organic reason for them to wear the mask. You know. Um, and they and it brings and it brings back like the old school Arrow vibe where like you know he actually had to hide his identity, even though yeah. Ollie was super bad at it. 
not as bad as Barry, but he was still pretty bad. Um, but uh, what other what other cross whatever tiny crossovers would I like to see? Of course, let's get musical part two, Flash, Supergirl. Let's do it. Let's do it. Bring back Darren Christ and actually use him properly. Yeah. Like, come on, man. I'll, and, like, can we get, like, a bigger version of I'm Your Super Friend? Now that we got, like, a whole Super Friend squad? Mm-hmm. Like, give, also, me music- give me a musical, damn it. That's all I want. I'm also, a very easy man to please. Also, if you can't get Darren Chris back because he's so popular, you know, you could do the whole crisis recasting thing and... I know exactly who I would want uh, to be. Music Meister? Yeah. Shoot. Uh, Lucas Gabriel. Oh, shit. I would be down. And you know why that's a reference, right? Why is that a reference? Because he's played a certain super character before. Has Has he played a super character? Superboy. Oh, you're right on small bit. I for, I completely forgot about that, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so. Oh my god, yeah, that was the same arc where Crypto was introduced, and it, Crypto with a golden retriever for some reason. Yeah, I remember that now. Huh. Uh, so, yeah, those are some of the small crossovers I'd like to see, for sure. Um... So, speculation time. Now, we've done little bits of speculation here and there, so we're not going to reach right over the ones we've already done. So, finally, I get to talk about this. So, at the end of Crisis, um, as Clark is, you know, getting ready to, like, do his thing, he gets a call on the phone from his Mm -hmm. wife. And Lois is like, hey, Clark, you need to get over here. Um, You know, your, your sons are causing a little trouble. And he's like, Sons, as in plural. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she's like, "Yeah, your two kids, the boys, the boys." And I'm just like, "Ah, I know where this is going. We all know where this is going because, let's face it, Kate's cool, but she's not exactly babysitter material." Um, also, also the fact that since this is the merger of worlds, of uh, they they can literally explain why he's not with Batman because Batman dipped. Mm-hmm. And of course, for those who don't get the quote unquote subtle references that we're saying here, Damien. super sons, super sons, because you know, uh, in on this Earth, uh, Bruce, you know, went went to go get went to go for a, like a pack of bat smokes, just never came back. Yep. Bruce is like the superhero equivalent of an absentee father. And he literally is an absentee father now. Mm Mm-hmm. But, but, yeah. And also, for those that might be a little pedantic, they have confirmed that Super Sons will, will have a presence in Superman and Lois. And also, casting calls have come out for two teenage boys. Yeah, so for that don't, show. So don't and, worry, don't worry, guys. Every everybody who was like me and was like, "Yo, I hate Young William. He is the worst. Get him out of here." I oh, I like Ruby, but let's not keep Ruby around for too long. They're not doing that again. They've learned their lesson. They can actually cast teenagers. When they actually want to make the teenagers do teenage things, that's another issue. But we'll save that for the Riverdale episode. But also, to be fair, um, we have seen a TV show done with a f- family of superheroes, including a teenager. In Black Lightning. Been, yeah. And that's been done well. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's what I'm saying. Like, um, I, just, I, I just want to take the time to address that. So many people, and uh, this is just kind of a general CW uh, like thing that I want to say. Okay, like Crisis was not perfect. Uh, it had a lot of problems, but it had a lot of good points. 
but I feel like so many people just generally hate the CW because it's the CW. That they don't give anything a chance. Y'all are hating on Lois and Clark, like the Lois and the new Lois and Clark show, because that's what I'm going to call it, even though it's called Superman and Lois. It's Lois and Clark. They're hating on Lois and Clark just because it's on the CW. When on the CW, they have done the family superhero aspect very, very, very well. Like also, Flash, like Flash, like not even Black Lightning. Flash when uh, when Nora was on, I know a lot of people hate Nora, but personally. The Nora stuff was like back when I was a flash getting back to normal and being good again. Yeah, and also one other thing is um, this is semi spoiler to what they're doing with uh, Black Lightning currently. Um, but Black Lightning's biggest down spot in the whole entire show, they don't have to deal with, they already have a one up for. And that is uh, Lynn Pierce. Because we have Lois Lane instead. Uh, oh, yeah. And so we don't have to deal with, like, addictions or anything. And we don't have to deal with, a, like, oh, you're, you're just using your powers because, like, you know, you're addicted to the thrill. None of that bullshit that I, I will admit, even though I love Black Lightning, that got annoying as hell. Which, by the way... They actually, like, slightly one-handed mentioned that in a recent episode. Did they, ret- did they retcon her alcoholism? Is it gone now? Did post-crisis erase her alcoholism? Slash drug no. addiction? Made it worse. Oh, lord. She's addicted to green light. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, Okay. Yeah, you, you really gave me incentive to watch Black Lightning again. Uh, but but like I said, she is the she is the one downside. The rest of oh, it is oh, is oh, really yeah. good. I, I believe like you. I will just go ahead and because I'm already talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you guys watch the current season of Black Lightning, one of the down spots has been the riff between Jennifer and the Pierce family. Uh-huh. Jennifer like goes on her own crisis related journey in the like same week that Crisis was airing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me about this. And she gets her own journey episode where she like finds out about Crisis and multiverse, but she also gets her shit together and it no longer is against the family. That's awesome because yeah, I had a I had a big problem with that too. And also, she gets her own friend, who may or may not be this universe's version of Geoforce. Oh, sweet! Nice. Let's hope he doesn't go the way of Young Justice. He he's definitely different. Like his name's Brandon. Oh, so they're not doing Brian, but <laughs> making it sound foreign because he's foreign. His name is literally spelled Brian, guys. Like, why are you call? Why are you making it? Why are you giving it an accent for no reason? Oh, trust me, I know about this. Uh, my my middle name is Colin, and people sometimes call it Colin. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but anyways, uh, so yeah. Um, that's Black Lightning. We talked about well, Supergirl will quickly address. Uh, oh, also you know, one other thing about Black Lightning. I won't, I won't spoil this part, mm-hmm. but they do have a crisis tie-in that is similar to Batwoman, where okay. it's not a big thing, but it's a thing that comes in at like near the end where it's like, what the fuck? I'll text you about it when we get off air, but I I, I, I want it to be something, but I don't think it's going to be this because that's too big. Um, okay. But I'll, te- I'll text you off air. Um, but anyway, so Supergirl will quickly address this. Uh, so one, uh, one big thing we find out about Crisis is that there are leftover doppelgangers from destroyed Earths that are like magnetically pulled into Earth Prime through like mm-hmm. a wormhole. 
And so that's how we get the multiple brainies, uh, including, uh, you know, a brainies IRL sister, Megan Rath, which, you know, who is amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. the episode, was, episode was really good, besides breaking my heart at the end. Um, you know, super core BS. Like, super core BS, and then breaking my heart at the end and hurting my favorite little cinnamon roll's feelings. Mm-hmm. You don't mess with that one. That is one character you don't mess with, man. She's so precious. Why are you hurting her? For the greater good. Greater good. I don't believe a single word of that, Brian. All all I'm hearing is for the bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, Supergirl was good. And that also explains... The, so, the, I really have a problem with how they schedule their shows. Because they seriously should have just, they should have aired Supergirl first, and then Batwoman. But I get why they did that, though, because it it gives you more of a... Of a, yeah, WTF. But still, like, I feel like, you know, having shit make more sense is better than the, (gasps) you know? Uh, Which, by the... Yeah, which by the it way, it kind of needed the shock because the shock was one of the best parts of the episode. Yeah, yeah, because it was the only, it was probably one of the oh, like two, one of two, three really good parts of that episode. Because that episode, in my opinion, worst episode of season started, one, started really well and ended it really well. It did, it did, but that middle man, it, it, so it's it's so funny because uh, so. You know, we've been going on this episode for a pretty long time, so I'm pretty sure you guys have a, a good feel for me and Brian's dynamic if you're new to the podcast. I am definitely the more realist slash slightly pessimistic person, and Brian is, you know, optimist prime over here. Which and which always, which is funny, though, because there's legit a, a movie called The Life of Brian, that all that ends in a musical number. Always yeah. look on the bright side of life. But yeah, that that, that is literally that's literally our dynamic. And I, I love whenever I get to corrupt Brian and Brian's opinions. Because <laughs> I, I feel like Dark City is just like, yes, embrace your hatred, Brian. You know it sucks. You know it sucks. Because one of the one of the few things that that does can bring out the, I wouldn't say hate, but close not, to it. It's just, I, I didn't hate it. I, I, I just... Is Batwoman. Strong. Yeah. So, just, just funny side tangent. So, like, we're watching the episode. We're watching the episode, and I'm like, okay, this episode's good so far. This episode's good so far. And then we get to, you know, we get to certain parts. Uh, you know, I've talked, I talked about it way more in detail in the Batwoman podcast. Listen to that if you want to hear me fully rant about it. But eventually, I'm just like, okay, this is fucking stupid. And, well, and it, I, it's, it's a slow decline because you're like, okay, that's interesting. That's, that's kind of that, stupid. Uh, yeah. That, no, no, no. It starts off, oh, that's cool. Okay, he's showing mm-hmm. emotion. That's cool. I don't know how you're, st- okay, and it's like, okay, you're stopping a train with a grappling hook. That's a little questionable, but I'll let that pass. And then, oh God, they're doing the ship thing. And and then and then it's like, okay, well, I'm I'm sure they're gonna address it. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Okay, let it go. Let it go. It's okay. It's a small thing. And then and then they're like, uh, okay, like, uh, so the villain doing, of the week is yeah, we're the doing team. a cyber we're doing a cyber we're doing a cyber terrorist thing. Cool. That's really interesting, especially in on a in a big city like Gotham. You could do a lot of damage like that. And then, awesome. and then also, Kate starts doing detective work. Actual detective work, which she never does. And I'm like, okay, you're, you're learning. You're and doing then, things. and then, and then we find out that the the ultimate villain of the week is a teen girl. And at least in our minds, who like have read some of the comics, we're like, oh, shit. oh could it be this or this or 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 even this? I would freak out if it was this, and then just like, oh no, you know, I'm like one letter off, but no, not exactly. Well, then it two letters off, and oh, it's oh. like, is she oh, kind of corrupt because her parents are corrupt, or is she okay, so, a villain, and, and, or is and, she and, just and like, so, or is she so just that, like teen, 
teen so Felicity, is, where she just. And so th- this is the funny part, right? So I'm I'm, I'm talking to Brian. I'm I'm talking to Brian. Both Mimi and I uh, are just like completely crapping on the episode by now at this point. And then I'm just like, okay, this is the stupidest episode of season one we've seen so far. We've seen some pretty stupid episodes. Um, and Brian and I, I was like, and Brian's like, yeah, you know, two steps forward, one step, uh, three steps forward, one step, uh, one step back. I'm like, Brian, I don't think that's four steps. And then he's like, no, nah, come on, man, it's not that bad. And so I literally type out the plot. I type it out. He reads it. And he goes, no, it, it it wasn't just that. It was at the same time that you said that. Yep. They revealed the villain's motivation. Yeah, yeah, he, re- yeah, the, yeah. But then they reveal the villain's full motivation, and I literally like that right there. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is stupid stuff. <laughs> but the title is really good. And I really? get, I get their reasoning, and it's a good message, and it's... it makes it makes perfect sense for this hero. If any hero is going to do this type of messaging. It's supposed to be Batwoman. Supergirl does not need to do a gun control episode because Supergirl is not a villain, is not a hero that uses guns. But you know what? Batwoman is a hero who is gay. So yeah, address gay issues. Do you, fam? Great. That's amazing. But so heavy handed. Who, buddy? Who, buddy? And, and also, also. The I forgot her character's name now, but Rachel Maddow. It, it's just Rachel. Oh, uh, Fairchild, uh, Vesper Fairchild. Vesper Fairchild. Her her even thing is once it comes out, she is once com- she does the can article, I, she's like, I, yeah, but why do we need to bring politics into it? Yeah, just because you address it doesn't mean it's any less cringy. Just saying. Um, and also, it's just like. Why did you bring it up then? And why were you so ship crazy with her? And one one thing that is cool that I will mention because it's a little crisis tie in. Kara also wrote an article, although I don't know when Kate had the time to sit down and interview, um, like Kara, uh, with Kara Dandridge. But you know, I guess they did it over the phone or something. Whatever. Yeah, and also, um, as a cool little side note thing, the cyber terrorist chick who might become a sidekick she isn't in the comics but she's essentially kind of like it's sort of like how felicity's one like an analog character for a barbara gordon and not actually barbara gordon kind of but but also i do want to mention that the um the captain america dude that they ship kate with he's actually in the comics yeah uh, uh, we actually got that in an email from uh, one of our viewers on the Batwoman podcast. Which, oh. by the way, segues us into uh, plugs and stuff, because I feel like that's pretty much it. Well, um, unless you got anything else. Well, um, we we can't speculate about like what's going to happen with Flash, because Flash hasn't happened yet. Oh yeah, Flash hasn't aired yet. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't know. I definitely think Iris is the changed one or the replaced one. Because, like, all the the synopsis is very focused on Iris. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't see Iris in any of, like, the, the, the promo trailer stuff for, like, this week on Flash. We hear her. But we don't ever see her. So it's definitely, it has to be Iris, right? Like, it's got to be. Either that or she's an extra doppelganger or something because it just... It seems like it would take a lot to get from her being an yeah. investigative reporter to wanting to be like a full-on spy. And also, I, I just want to say, please, please, if we're bringing Irish doppelgangers onto the show, do not, do not, under any circumstances, bring a speedster Iris to this show again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, though? If they do, she'll know what she's doing. Oh, okay, Brian. I understand. I understand that, Brian. I get it. It's probably going to be so much better, but I just am going to forever have that memory stuck in my head, and I can't fairly judge it because I would just keep thinking about that. Oh, I 
I totally get that. Like I'm, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna deny my bias, and I'm also still salty because like all the Irish fans that decided to jump my comments, it's like you clearly just hate Irish. Just go ahead and say you hate Irish. You're just beating around the bush and not admitting you hate Irish. I'm like, have you not watched any of my other videos where I'm like, yo, Iris is awesome, but she needs to go back to doing her job. You know who is one person that I would want is an uh, Iris that I would like to see again, but I don't know if they're going to handle it well because she might be dark and brooding if she's the only one left from her universe, or one of the only ones. Cop Iris. Ooh, Cop Iris is cool. I like Cop Iris. But... But yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Also, one I, of the thing that I, that we didn't really I, address the fact. I'm also happy that I, I really hope they don't replace Danielle because Danielle's been getting a lot of great stuff, and mm-hmm. I know she's preg- I know she's pregnant, so like she can't do as much. But you know, she's still she can still do stuff. That's what stunt doubles are for. Hmm. Also, just have. Oh, well, from what I've heard, uh, her character goes away for a little bit. Yeah, because she's pregnant. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but, um, but, yeah, we're going to get Ralph and we're going to get Sue. I'm, I'm really excited. I hope Ralph, I mean, you know, I love Ralph, but I hope Ralph changes at least a little bit. Or maybe at least just gets, I, I want him to change costumes just slightly. I like how Jean just flexed the drip on everybody. Also, we never talked about that. Jean just randomly flexed the drip on everybody. It's like he like they were walking in the battle and Kara's like, hey, you looking nice, man. And it's like, well, yeah, new new world, new look. That is one thing that I like and didn't like, because also you notice during that scene, John is fighting the mentors and uh he is actually uh, David in the suit, which is really cool. But also, he's not having any powers or anything. He's punching the Dementors. Yep. And they even asked Mark G about that and on Twitter. And you know what his response was? What? Just like $10 sign. Oh, yeah, but Sundays. obviously. Yeah, yeah. no duh. Yeah, but uh, Jean, uh, David himself has actually come out and said that uh, they're going to use that more. And well, gonna... in the com in the in the comics, Jean is strong as strong as Superman. He's supposed to be Superman level in terms of strength. So they are going to like go more. Is that he really enjoyed actually being able to go out into the fight and that's awesome. Be in suit and that because he actually said in an interview that he's like. He was actually legit surprised when they asked him to be in this crossover that he was going to be a big part because he's like, usually for these crossovers, I just get a few extra days with my wife and kids, and I'm nice. and I'm okay with it. But I'm but I this, was just but this time they let me punch things. Yeah. And uh, he said that they're going to delve more into that, and they're also going to delve more into him as a PI. Which um, I'm so I'm so glad he gets to do his real job. And also he and also he creates a new a new home for for Team Super because yep. their old headquarters, the DEO, is now tainted. Yep. And uh, so the oh. tower is coming. And also, speaking of people getting suits, Wynn's getting the suit, y'all. Yep, Wynn's coming back with with his own. Legion suit and mask. Yep, and we might get to see Doppelganger, Evil Toy Man versus Arwin, which is cool. Who I hope takes up the mantle of Toy Master. Maybe, but but, but yeah, that would be cool. Uh, but yeah, so that was one of the few. That was one of the things where it's the downside, but I could see where it. Yeah, yeah. you just don't got time. You just don't got time. Yeah. I totally and get don't it. got budget. Yeah, but but also um, Cisco. It's going to be interesting to see how he reacts to now having powers again. Yeah, because uh, I feel so bad for him. He went through all that effort, like a whole season's arc, to get rid of his powers, and Monitor is just like boop. 
Nope. We need you, buddy. Your powers are way too convenient for plot. Because let's be real, that, that's the real reason. But, but yeah, so all of that is going to be interesting when Flash finally comes back. Also, don't know who the villain is. Yeah, um, is it going to actually be Godspeed? I hope, maybe? Uh, and probably... they've, all, they've casted a female Mirror Master, so... Oh, is he doing a new mirror? <gasps> oh, really? Like, we smoke? we might. Um, I know that uh, Katie Sackoff is returning. I'm sorry, y'all. I just I just went into fanboy mode for a second. My voice went all high and shit. But yo, actual rope. Katie Sackoff's coming back too. Yo, I like Antoinette. I like Antoinette Black. She's awesome. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Um. Female mirror master, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I just want, I just want a rogues, an actual rogues arc, man. It's too bad Leo's not coming back. Yeah, which by the way, we never mentioned it, but they, they bring back voiceover Leo again, real quick, in part yep. two of Crisis. Yep. He's the one who introduces Lex Luthor. Are they actually gonna, um, I wonder if they're gonna at least bring back Lisa. I mean, could, I mean, I guess they could recast Gold Glider because Gold Glider's actress is pretty busy. Uh, but like, I wonder if they're gonna bring back Lisa because that would be cool. I'd like to. That see would Lisa be again. cool, but also, Cisco's already in a very serious. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, but also, Crisis could just be like that never happened. I get you, but oh, also one other thing that um. And, literal, and and literally, I think you and me are the only two only two people that remember that like very underrated but awesome ship. Yes, indeed. I even it's like a thousand times better than the other ship that they had him with. Yeah, which shall not be named. Yeah, but I do want to say one other thing that um that was a um result of crisis. That was a smaller thing that was just slyly mentioned in Legends that I didn't even notice the first time around. Okay. Several YouTube reactors are confirmed to be in Earth Prime. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, with, with, the, with the Legends React stuff. Yeah. yeah, and I actually follow three out of the four of those. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and apparently they've known about it since August that it was going to be a wow. thing. And um, and those are actually just excerpts from their actual reacting to legends. Good for good for y'all. Good for like y'all. if I'm not mistaken, I know it, 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 that was them them reacting to the finale. Nice, and just like the big giant dragon that came in. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that is our speculation portion. We hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun doing it. Now it is time for plugs. We got a, Our shows are all back now, so this is a longer section. Well, except uh, for one, because I believe... Oh, yeah, Flash doesn't come back yet. Yeah, Flash doesn't come back yet, because it's, uh, it's taking a break for Arrow. Or, and Legends is taking a break also, I think. For Arrow? Yeah, for Arrow. So, uh, as it goes, guys, me for, we usually do me first, because I'm smaller list, yep. and, uh, me, it's, it's gonna be, uh, today, because, yeah. Sunday, um, doing Doctor Who, and uh, Batwoman, and then... Mm-hmm. On Monday, probably going to be doing late Supergirl and uh, Black Lightning. Black Lightning. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday is the series finale. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. And, um... They've already behind the scenes confirmed several characters and actors, and it looks like it's going to be 
crazy. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Just fucking with you. So just to fill you guys in on the inside joke, Brian shared an article uh, like <laughs> with, with some of the with some of the like, characters named that we're gonna show up in the finale. And I was like, cool, that's dope. What if that would have been a surprise? <laughs> but then also the chair on top though is another one of our friends shared the same article the next day. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so I got to see it again. But anyway, yeah, keep going. My bad. I just had And to, if had to they're going to confirm that already, I wonder what surprises yeah, they yeah, have. What, yeah, what's the big stuff? I want to know what the big stuff is. And uh, so that's going to be very interesting. You know, they... oh shit, real quick. We did not even talk about this at all. But possibly Sarah, baby Sarah is back. Right? Baby Sarah returned. We did not talk about that. Baby Sarah returned. And Baby Sarah is possibly the death stroke of this new timeline. Future death stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Manu's busy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. Yeah. So she could be future female death stroke and she's probably going to kill her brother. Also, we didn't also, we didn't address this either, but like, uh, Alice is totally going to kill Beth. She's totally going to kill Beth. Like, mm, maybe. But I, I feel like it's like a 60% chance. It's a 60% chance. I don't know, because that would permanently get rid of Rachel. And she's like the best part about the show. It wouldn't permanently get rid of Rachel. It would, yep. just, permanently, it would just permanently make Rachel the villain. No, it would permanently get rid of Rachel, because I feel like at that point, Kate would just instantly give up. She would give up on her, like, trying to redeem her, but she'd still be a bad guy. It's not like she'd kill her. Like, she's not Ollie. Season one Ollie, yeah, it totally would have just killed Beth slash Alice, but she'd still be running around as a bad guy. How many villains do we see who show up for more than one season? How many villains do we see are as good as Alice? Uh, Verse Flash? But he shows up multiple times. As cameos. Yeah, and but... because Kavanaugh stays around playing I... other people. Which, I... by the way, I was going to mention this earlier, but I really like the fact that they that they managed to find a way to make not only make Nash pariah, but then make a reason why he stays around. Yep. Uh, so... But no, I, 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 do th- I do think that I do think that um, just just my my opinion and the opinion of the Batwoman podcast, or at least the members that were a part of that episode, uh, Beth is definitely going to die. Um, I wouldn't put it past it, but I hope not. Oh, I'm not saying I want it to happen. I just know it's. Go- I just know it's probably going to. But anyway, uh, back to my stuff. Um, Wednesdays is. Usually, I had to take a mental health day last week because work was just crazy and I didn't have the, like, mental fortitude to do two reviews and edit them and all that. But usually Tuesday is Riverdale and Nancy Drew. He means Wednesday, guys. He he, He said Tuesday, but he meant Wednesday. I meant Wednesday. Sorry. And then Thursday is Legacies, which I am loving that. Right. It's mm-hmm. so... They're getting so weird. And I am loving it. Yep. Like, yep. it is a supernatural show that brings in, like, not even just as villains as, like, the kids that we follow. But also... No, it's, not your it's, typical uh, supernatural creatures. But also, it's more teen than Riverdale. It's more teen than any show that we cover. Yeah, it's the most teen teen show we've got. But, you know, I, that's why I love it. <laughs> and then Friday is Harley Quinn and Owl House. We're approaching the last three of Harley, man. It's been a great ride. 
Oh, it has indeed. And it's just like they lull you into a sense of hilarity and then they start the, bringing in the feels. Yep. And it's gonna, I have a feeling it's going gonna, it's gonna to end on something huge. And that's going to be a real fun one to cover for sure. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's you. That's me. Besides right. next week's Channel Chaser, which you can oh, get yeah. to so, when yeah, you get yeah, to so, it. Yeah, so I'm going to open up next week on next week's episode of Channel Chasers. Uh, we are actually going to be covering the chilling adventures of Sabrina, which, uh, you know, little teaser. I liked it overall. And I have some things to say. That wasn't a very enthusiastic I liked it, but no, I you'll don't. see why okay. later. Okay, but I do actually like it. I do, I do want to clarify. I seriously do like it. I, I like it, but I got some problems as well. Um, but yeah, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Honestly, I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to see if Mimi can come on because I think that'll be hilarious. Um, but yeah. Uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is our next episode of Channel Chasers. And uh, also, speaking of Channel Chasers stuff, we appreciate everyone of you who listens. You guys are the best. We love you. Um, we would really love you if you left a review for the podcast so more people could help, you know, find us. Because that would be great. Yeah. We would appreciate, would really appreciate that. Um also, if you want to leave us feedback or your own opinions on these TV shows... Are you going to tell the people what you do? Oh, I will in a second. I'm just doing podcast stuff first. Oh, I thought you were, like, winding down things and... No, 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 no. I'm doing podcast stuff, and then I move into my stuff. Since I, All uh, right, I, started, cool. I started with a podcast plug in the first place. All right. My bad. Yeah. Okay. So, back to your regularly scheduled uh, advertisement... <laughs> But not advertisement. Um, so yeah, leave it. Leave us a great review. We would really appreciate it. Or you know, even without so great review, we would like some honest feedback. That'd be great. Um, but yeah, um, if you want to reach us and you know give us your opinions on some of the TV shows that we've covered or any particular ones that we're covering, uh, you can leave the feedback um, via email um, at uh, Channel Chasers Podcast at gmail uh, send emails there, and I will definitely uh, put those together and read those out loud, and you know, Brian can read a few too, uh, if we have enough. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, that's as far as the podcast stuff goes. Uh, again, we just really appreciate the listens. So, as far as my stuff, Brian is on YouTube. The link to his channel is in the description. I am on Blair.tv. Uh, you just search my name, Mr. J's Reviews, and I definitely pop up. I'm, like, always on the homepage. Uh, on that site, because I'm always freaking active. Um, as you're about to see... Subtle flex. You. I mean, you know, had to a little bit. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm always active, uh, as you're about to see with my schedule. So, Sunday, I've got, I'm, I'm going to post my Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, uh, Sabrina review on Sunday. Um, I'm going to be very in-depth. I got a lot of stuff to discuss. Uh, so it's probably going to be like 20 plus minutes. Not looking forward to editing that. Um, then I've got uh, Dare Me, which is a really fun, like, dramatic team show that has me on the edge of my seat every week. Um, I also have a Batwoman. And then moving on to Mondays, I am doing a late review of Supergirl, probably in the afternoon on Mondays or like early mornings, depending on honestly when I get up. <laughs> and then um, also Monday nights, Good Doctor. We're getting Morgan Resnick backstory. I love Dr. Resnick. So yay. Um, so there's that. Um, and then on Tuesday, we got uh, the Arrow series finale. That show means the world to me. It was literally the first show I started reviewing on YouTube. Honestly, uh, this is not an exaggeration at all. If it was not for Arrow, you would not be hearing me today, uh, at least doing this. I would probably still be doing comic reviews uh, if it wasn't for Arrow. So, you know, my love always goes out to Mark G, Beth Schwartz, Steven, all of them. 
They're great. Uh, we'll always love this show. We'll always support it. Uh, so it's gonna it's gonna be a, it's gonna be hard. I might cry, you guys. I might cry on camera. If you want to see me cry, watch that video. Um, because I might definitely cry. Uh, speaking of crying, um, well, no, we're not that day yet. But uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, we've got uh, Riverdale and Nancy Drew, uh, fun teen night. Um, you you want to talk about a show I make fun of all the time, Riverdale. Uh, and a show that craves all the time, Nancy Drew. It looks like it's going to be another scary episode, so that's going to be fun. Uh, now, now is the day I'm going to cry. Um, because we got the Good Place Forkin' season finale, our series finale. I'm going to cry like a little baby bench. I'm going to cry like a little baby bench. I'm going to be so sad, y'all. <laughs> Two of my favorite shows are ending in the same week. I am going to be a mess. Um, also reviewing Legacies, uh, probably on Friday because like I just got too much stuff. Uh, because I'm also reviewing a million little things, which is packing a lot of fields into the second half. Was not prepared. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Uh, he says in quotation marks, but it is actually going to be fun. Um. And then anime stuff, um, I'm just going to skip over that because, you know, some of you guys might be interested, some of you guys might not be. My Hero Academia, Railgun, Interspecies Reviewers, and Nekopara are the animes that I cover, um, which are usually on the weekends. And Harley Quinn, obviously, and The Owl House as well. I feel like that is it. I am officially done with plugs, like 15 minutes later. Okay, yep. so that is it. Uh, thank you guys for sitting through this long ass episode of Channel Chasers. I'd okay, say it's about the same length as part one. Yeah, if you've made it all the way to the end, play that Legend of Zelda level up music. Da, 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 da. Because you are a truly dedicated listener and we appreciate you. You deserve an internet cookie. Yep, indeed. So, uh, thank you. Uh, we will hopefully catch you guys next week for the Sabrina discussion. Until then, hail Satan. Peace.